Hello and welcome to another Greatest Hits, the Guests podcast with me, Mark Tiley, on your very own Manx Radio. Uh, just recently, we had a legend from the world of rock on the show, the wonderful Francis Rossi, frontman for Status Quo and has been for a very long time. Now, the decision to keep going after the death of Rick Parfit couldn't have been easy at all. And we'll talk about that in this podcast. But when I chatted to him a little while ago, it was just on the eve, in fact, the day before the latest Quo album, Backbone, was scheduled for release. And it's doing incredibly well. But I started off by asking him and, and saying, I don't think I've ever known so much pre-publicity and incredible excitement about the release of a status quo album. Nor have we. I don't understand. It's either a very good album or we've just hit the timing right. And I know which one I'd like it to be. But, you know, I can't, I can't, I don't get it. You know, X years ago, I'd have said, oh, we're going to sell millions of records here. Now I'm thinking, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I no think, idea at all. I think I do get it because it's the first one in, with the new lineup. We've seen you, but we haven't actually had an album. Mm. Uh, three years now since three years on. Died, since, yeah. yeah, I can't believe where's that gone. I don't know. It's well, once you're over twenty, thirty. Once you're getting older, what happens? I know. <laughs> your, your ticket slows down, so everything goes bloody faster. Well, I suppose so. But it can't, I looked at it. I thought three years. That's insane. That's insane. I well, suppose... in fact, it was about now he died in yeah. Turkey, although he died officially at Christmas. Yeah. And the difficult bit was after he died in the room and carried off dead, yeah. although in the morning he was back on a life support, which freaked us out. But we went downstairs to go back to our rooms and through reception, and there were people in the, re in the, in the restaurant eating and drinking. I'd see some guy, I can see him now, he was trying to pull this woman he was with, and people are checking in, and people went high and making jokes, and that was the point, you think... Our mates just died and you're all... And let's face it, people are dying as you and I talk. I'm trying yeah. to do status quo promos. Yeah. You have been really busy. I mean, the book... I've started reading yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I haven't finished it yet. I'm on it. I talk too much. And then there's I'm this... It. I'm on it. <laughs> Francis Rossi, Hannah Rickard album. We talk too yeah. much. It's all been going on. Yeah. Been... I know. I didn't... It fell into place, you know... Um, we'd had the Hannah Ossie Ricard album ready for probably nine months before that. And then uh, it got delayed because I think Rick died and they were subsequently going to release something of Rick's and we didn't want to get away with that. And all these things fell together. I had the song talk too much. Then the book, I said, well, if it's, why don't we do this? And it kind of felt as this album did. I didn't expect to do this album. The track Backbone seemed to, what a great title. Yeah. yeah. It, it all just, you think, this is pre-written, it's a bit deep and meaningful, but I really didn't expect to to do the album. I agreed to do the album. I didn't expect it to go as easily as it did or as well as it did. I didn't expect a great reaction to it. Oh, I should only be grateful, I think. Yeah. What I love about the album, I've been through it a few times now, is, you know, you always joke about the fourth chord. We'll put the fourth chord. Mm. There's, there's a fifth and sixth in there, mate. I tell you, it's all going on. There's all sorts of different... It is going on. That's, that's a joke we've always got. I know, but it's, it's, well, it? it's a lovely, lovely mix in there. Well, I think so. That's, that's why I said I would... When, when my manager was pushing me to do it, record company, various people, and I didn't want to do it, didn't want to go through what we're going through, this prove yourselves after Rick. People think we shouldn't do it. But um, I said, well, OK. And I thought they'd say no. I thought, OK, I, I will produce it. I will pick the material. I will say what goes, what doesn't go. Blah, 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 blah. And they went, yeah, all right then. I went, oh, why didn't I say this years ago? It was, I expected them all to say, well, no, that's a bit much. And I was getting too dictatorial. And no, everyone yeah. went with it. And of course, that made the album a joy to go with. Everyone settled into it. The, the, I suppose they say out of adversity, you know, out of the thing, and Rick yeah. dying and people saying things about us that we shouldn't has just made me think, yeah, yeah. don't tell me not to, I'm going to do it. And I tell you and something it, about Richie, he's fitted in well, and not just on the music, very, but the personality, you two together on those promos, <laughs> magic. He's it's very good, it's yes. Good. He's very nice, he's got that Irish thing, yeah. you know. I realise what they mean about the gift of the cab, and it's not a negative. He's just got a way, and he's a very pleasant man. But again, he was something that when Rick's in that in that middle of the year said, I can't do this anymore, 
Oh, no. You said you're going to go on. And I said, well, yeah, because we'd always play and one of us would go on if the other went. And he said, who are you going to use? I said, well, I'm going to use Richie, surely. He said, well, yeah, glad you said that. Because yeah. we, we'd seen Richie a while and he modelled himself somewhat on Rick. He idolised Rick. And I don't think Rick would like us to have gone for uh, the archetypal blonde, bedenimed um, rock star looking like him from some other band who had a bit of history. And that would have really shit me off. And I'm sure it would have done the same to Rick. So the fact that Richie was there, again, it kind of... If you were looking at this thing in a movie, you'd say, yeah, of course. There's no way it happened like that. But it did. I'm thinking, I don't get it. So I'm kind of keeping my head down and keeping going for a spell. Yeah, yeah. good man. probably thinking, that's not status quo. What's he doing playing The Doors? Well, I'm playing The Doors Roadhouse Blues because I've read in a couple of places that that record was actually the inspiration for a complete turnaround in the sound of status quo after they'd been through their psychedelic era. So, was that the case? Somewhat. I mean, we did a track called... We'd done Dustpipe. We'd done a thing called Junior's Wailing and the, a fire band called Steamhammer. It wasn't very good, really, but people loved it. But then Rick and I were in Bielefeld at the... There were a club, this club the studio in Minden. There was this other place in, in Bielefeld. We used to get back from wherever and go to this club. And I forget the guy that used to own it. I don't know what we used to do. We used to go and have a goulash soup. You know, the Deutsches used to have the goulash soup oh, with yeah. the bread. We'd do that, you see. And we saw this couple dancing together. Old school Germans, really, compared to us then. But they were dancing to Roadhouse Blues, and they were, like, stuck together, these people. And if he bent, she bent. It was just such a thing to watch. And we were just moving to Roadhouse Blues and, and figured we'd have to do it and became very much a close song. And... I now see it at some points. We belted along doing the thing. It wasn't really um, as groovy as the Doors one, I don't think. Yeah, but slow we it did down. something yeah. with it. Yeah, because I was looking at some set lists. I don't know whether it was your first gig on the Isle of Man, but the old Par- uh, Palace Lido was a mass, yeah. massive dance hall over here. Sadly, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, I remember it, yeah. Uh, that was 74. Whether that would have been your first one over here? I'd, maybe you came earlier. I think so. The couple of things I remember about that, our manager at the time, Colin Johnston, his wife, Carol... Her dad was a boxer. Right. And we went over there, and this, we went into this hotel the night before. Oh, another thing happened. John Cogler had just got married, and him and his wife, we were on this bus, picked us up, and suddenly there's a fight between the two of them, physical. <laughs> and so Connie's gone to sort them, have a look what's going on. And, and, and John Cogler said, she won't let me sit by the window. And we thought, well, there's plenty of seats going to sit by the window. And anyway, we get to the hotel... And this guy's going on, and we were either late or something, and he said something, Carol had said something, and he was a bit mouthy, because in those days, again, a woman speaking up. And she, I just remember, got my attention, she said to him, you say that one more time, and I'll knock you out. <laughs> we, yeah, of course. And he said something, and she just went, boom! Ah. And there was this bloke lying on the floor. She just hit him with her left hand, like, boom! Whoa. And he went out, and... I came off that that stage that night, and I remember sitting on a red velvet settee thing that was in the room. And the following morning, I had the... Are we on radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I must move on. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me later. Yeah, well... Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Uh, Yeah, I I had a very itchy situation of sort of... um, Yeah, yeah. um, yeah. These things happen, yeah. little uh, gifts. I was always convinced that you couldn't, no, you can catch that off furniture, but you're you. not. There you go. Yeah. That's what there happened. That was the, that was the Isle of Man. you sweaty hot, which I was, but there we are, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> the Isle of Man. I, yeah, because, um, well, I thought I thought that was in the book. Uh, yeah, well, is it? I think it's in I haven't it. got to that bit yet. I'll have to, I'll oh, fast well, forward. Uh, you'll know you'll start itching. I'll, I'll stop um, it. John Coglin, he lived uh, down the road from me for about 10 years. 
Yeah, yeah, they used to go to those parties there, didn't they? Well, uh, yeah, oh, I wouldn't know, sir. Not uh, no, me, no, sir. no. I, yeah, but, yeah, I understand. I forget no. where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, uh, it's allegedly so. <laughs> right. Live Aid, yeah. when you stood on yeah. that stage, did you have any idea opening up that... No, that, not so. It. No, no. Did it no. just sort of not dawn until later? No, the thing was that um, I do this thing in the talk tours that I talk. It's all asked about Live Aid. And the whole thing that, that Bob had said, you know, Coral will have to go on first. Well, you know, rocking all over the world could have gone anywhere in there. It would have been... Pfft. But what happens is once Bob had finally got everyone to agree to do it, those that were going to do it, the next thing was who was going on where. So everybody wanted to go on last. Everybody wants to be top of the bill. Yeah. You know, I'm top on the poster. And so there was all this stuff oh, I couldn't go on before. I can't go on. They can't go on. I'm bigger than... All that went on. So Rick and I said, sorry, we'll go on first. We'll be finished and out of there by 12.15. Yes! Because, again, it was do what you have to do and go. Yeah. No one re- so we do it, we get on, and then him and I looked at each other with all the media down the front. I thought, wow, this is serious. And the feeling from the audience, never felt before. Mm. Didn't know backstage there was a massive screen. We didn't know it was being beamed all around the world at that point, and company kept being repeated. We get off, there's everybody on the show, he's standing there doing the clapping off as you come off. 
And you could see through these green teeth going, should have gone on first, shouldn't we? <laughs> Everybody realised at that point they should have gone on first. Yeah. We didn't realise that. So, but, you know, nobody can tell you who went on third, fifth, eighth. Nobody can. You know, just first was it. It's, it's weird, but you would never say that. We were like, let's get on and get off. It's not going to... You know, it did snowboard the whole thing. Yeah. Now, look, Hyde Park, 15th of September. Yeah. I reckon quite a few yeah. of our, our guys are going to get over there. You're not actually touring this album yet, but you will be playing some no. stuff from it on that one? I believe we've got we've got a really short set that day. It's ah. one of those things they try getting, which I'm quite pleased about at the moment. Um, when there's that many acts on, you just get on, do the thing and go. And with all due respect to the Beeb, it's it's it's, it's hanging by a thread there somewhat when you got TV trying to do it and uh, radio trying to do it and and getting it all getting none of us people to overrun or go on too early and stuff. So we will do uh, we will do one probably Liberty Lane, which is what yeah. I think they want. But um, I'm going to get that and hopefully enjoy it. I try not to go into any gig saying it's going to be fantastic. I'm just going to get up, do it, and see what happens. You always hope it will be. But I never try and sell to people. Yeah, you're gonna come along. It's gonna be great. Because you never to be. You say that. Like, oh, I didn't think it was that good. Yeah. You know. I've seen some dates. More dates for you on the solo oh, talking. The touring. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, the touring. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to do it this year because it's too obvious. It's what we. Everything yeah. slots into its norm. So I thought it'd be different to say, well, no, we'll do it next autumn. And obviously, again, if the, uh, if the album were a dismal failure, which we're still not really sure, although it seems oh. to be working very well. No, you cannot be sure at all these days. So it gives it time to breathe and perhaps happen. Um, but more than anything, I want to do things that people, uh, you know, various interviews and stuff we've done, people have said, well, why are you not touring? So it's making people talk rather than because you're touring soon. But we've been out all this summer. And we finish on the 20th of September in Switzerland, and and then we're done for the winter. And I go out talk to her early next year, and then the band go out again in on, in October. Well, I just hope we can get you back over here. Sadly, it won't be the the Lido with that furniture. That's all been burnt. No, uh, well, get you <laughs> well, back. They'd have to burn it after that. Yes. <laughs> get you back in the Villa <laughs> Marina, is where yes, we'll get you back. I really enjoy and a good Italian restaurant over there. I went to as well, so I'm going to go back Lovely. in there. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you so much. And uh, Thank you, sir. I'm not going to put the kiss of death on it. I think this album's going to be huge. I really, Let's really hope do. So. I really do. Thank you very much. <laughs>
That's Better Take Care. Another great track from a fabulous new album from Status Quo, Backbone. Uh, Very many thanks to Francis Rossi for coming on to our little show. I hope, I do hope, maybe next year they will return to the Isle of Man. You'll certainly find about it right here on Greatest Hits on Manx Radio, if that is the case. Uh, Keep listening, by the way. Podcasts coming up all the time with the guests from Greatest Hits. I'm Mark Tiley. This is Manx Radio. Look forward to your company again soon.